I love great conversations. Hi, my name is Angel Jones. Thank you for joining me on 12 Minute Convos where I help you create a brand of your own unique real self. Listen in as I have conversations with amazing people from all over the world. Good day, good day, Mark Wilshire. How are you going on this wonderful, beautiful day? Uh, hi, Angel. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thank you. Although I suspect that the weather here in Finland is not quite as beautiful as you've got over there. Yeah. What's the temperature over there? Well, my car this morning, when I when I looked at the temperature gauge, said minus one. Oh. Uh, which, which <laughs> well, for Finland in in November, that's pretty mild. But I guess that's uh, that's giving you uh, giving you something to think about. Yes, my friend. Uh, what happened right there is that my back, my spine immediately straightened. Um, just thinking about that temperature. But I can tell you that in my email, I have a draft uh, email there that I sent to good friends uh, who need it when they do with um, Caribbean sunshine. So just let me know and I'll send that your way. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as we finish talking, you send it over. That will be much appreciated. Yes, you are. will be receiving that, Mark. Well, Mark, <laughs> please tell us now that we have connected and we know that you are cold, right? <laughs> Which I have, warm, I have warm, warm socks on, so don't worry. I'm not, oh. too, I'm not too cold. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Which of your talents is responsible for us meeting well that'd have to be my my podcast or, or should i say podcasts uh, there's more than one i i publish the explore finland radio show where i interview finnish people in english about their hobbies their interests their sports team or or even about finnish history and, and culture and through doing this i was approached by two other british guys that asked if i would host a regular chat show about Finnish football so there's now the the Finnish football show so uh, hi to Mark from fcsuomi.com and Rich from Escape to Suomi. Hi Mark, hi Rich, that's great. <laughs> so who did you learn the skill from? The skill of podcasting? Yeah it's all completely self-taught. I guess I'm one of those hobby podcasters um, so there was a lot of online resources, blog posts and videos um, and I, I also spoke to uh, a local friend who's a, a photographer and videographer, Tuka Kiviranta. Hi, Tuka. Um, he gave me some useful tips, some encouragement, and then he even agreed to be interviewed for the podcast. So I think it's it sort of me shows that I'm giving something back to to Finns uh, or to Finland. And when Finns see that, they're they're always uh, happy to to offer their support. Hmm, that's um, interesting. And yeah, I never I, and and I never thought that I was creative uh, i've listened to podcasts for years never thought that i had something worth saying until i had a conversation with a, another british friend of mine and from that conversation the idea came maybe i could make something about finland and that's what started it three years ago i'm not the most prolific of podcasters but i try and include you know getting out there and visiting places and then interviewing someone and taking pictures so it's a little bit more I don't know, a bit more detail. And, and as I say, I'm a one man band, so it takes a bit of time. Yeah, well, I did appreciate the conversation I listened to on the podcast, uh, just the sound effects that were going on in the background. I'm guessing you were in a cafe on that one. I think that's the episode where we interviewed uh, Mehmet Hetmai, who's a, a Finnish international footballer. And we were previewing some international games that were coming up. And yeah, he, he agreed to meet me in a cafe. He was there with his wife and his son, small son. And they were, they were contributing to that, that background, that background noise. And uh, like I say, when you, when you demonstrate that you're, you're doing something for the benefit of the country, then Finns are prepared to help you. And, and, you know, Finnish football is not quite so high profile as other countries. So there's less ego. Everyone's prepared to sort of just, just have a chat, a conversation. And uh, I guess, People have got to trust me now that I'm I'm going to make them sound the best that I can, and I'm not trying to to catch them out. I suppose. Yeah, which is which is really fun. Why will you continue uh, to repeat this skill? I mean, I'm saying it's fun, but why will you continue? Yeah, no, it is fun. I really I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy that thing where you publish the the podcast and you get that sense of I've just made something, hmm. and that creativity thing again um secondly i'm i'm a brit i'm from london originally i'm now living in finland and it's helping me meet new people and develop my own 
local network here in Seinejoki in Finland and showing that I'm giving something something back. And there's been times where I've met people in a kind of business networking situation and I introduce myself. Oh, hi, I'm Mark. And they say, oh, yeah, I know who you are. That's quite that's quite something. That is quite something, my friend. Uh, well, so tell us one other thing that you've done, Mark, consistently over the last three years. Yeah, this is this would have to be building up my, my company. It's actually been four years that we four years ago, we founded our company Export. And it's me and uh, all of my business partners are Finnish. And the idea came to me uh, four and a half years ago when I was made redundant uh, from a UK company. And I decided, well, I'm here in Finland. I want to stay here. My family is settled here. My ex-wife and my kids are Finnish. And I I want to be here. And I couldn't get a job. No People were interested in my CV, but not interested enough to give me a job. And that gave me the idea that maybe I could work for you know, two or three companies and, and do some work for, for different companies. Mm. Um, I was introduced to the, the people that became my business partners and we founded this company Export, X-P-O-R-T. Mm. And Export has a range of services to help Finnish companies improve their, their export sales, basically. So any, any resources that they're within their company, we are there to, to add. And it, it kind of, it manifests itself in market research, uh, lead generation, partner searches, um, helping them go to trade shows. And, you know, I've even got three customers that I meet one week, just English conversation because they want to improve their improve their English. And wow. there was no way four years ago I knew that was coming. But two people within a space of a month said, I know someone that would like to improve their English. Can you meet with them? And I was like, yep. I can do anything. <laughs> wow. How does that make you feel being the individual that's uh, flexible in the business model you are offering? Um, I think, think that the flexibility comes from necessity of hearing what people want, and then offering the work, the work to them. You know, you, we, we started in the beginning with a clear idea of how we could work with companies. And then we learned that quite quickly that that wasn't necessarily what they wanted. And so we, we had to start from the beginning hmm. learning Right. Let's listen to what the customer says and let's offer them what they actually need. Hmm. Um, how does how does it make me feel starting a company? Wow, that's been tough. Starting from scratch. We we did. It's not like we were uh, accountants that left the company and started our own accounting firm and took clients with us. We started from scratch. There wasn't there isn't really that much direct competition. One or two individual consultants around, but but not such. It's not such a a recognized industry this kind of export consulting um so it's been it's been tough and we we had four years of not earning much um but i think my my overriding feeling is just determined determined to make this company succeed so that we can look back and say wow those first few years were tough but now look what we built hmm. and we're not there yet yeah but this, could be, cool. this could be the first year that we we finish in the black oh that would be, that would be congratulations year. yeah congratulations yeah it seems we're moving in the right direction that's great. So just to someone that's listening, Mark, why they should do what you've done by um by specifically <laughs> listening. So there is a there is a, a a wisdom nugget there, I believe, which is um the value of listening to your customer. Yeah, I think I think that's that's maybe the thing that I would uh would suggest that other people do rather than starting their own company without any any customers <laughs> in the very beginning. That's why I was laughing. Um and I, I certainly wouldn't advise anyone nearby here to become my competitor. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think this, I think this customer service thing, is is where it starts. I mean, for me, me my first job, uh, I left school at 18, couple of A levels, and decided I wanted to work. And I went to work at Harrods in Knightsbridge, big big department store in London. And from the beginning, you were just drilled into you that that customer service is where the sales came from, and I that that's the way I've always done my selling. I'm not I'm not really a salesman who stands up there and can sell, sell, sell. But by offering offering customer service, you get that you get that repeat, repeat customer coming back. And I think if it's easier to keep get a customer coming back than it is to find a new customer, it's quite a quite a sort of generalization, but I think it's true. 
Yeah, I totally agree. Amazing audience, you're hearing it live here with Mark Wilshire again. He is the podcast host of Now Two Podcasts, which is Explore Finland Radio and Finnish Football. Definitely check that out. Mark, let's switch gears for a moment now and let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Mark. What is your earliest childhood memory? Yeah, it was it was visiting my mum in hospital when my brother and sister were born. Mm, how old do you think you were? Well, I know when they were born, so I know that I was uh, two years and nine months old. Wow. So why do you think this memory is so clear and how do you see it connecting to who you are today? I don't know why. I, I remember, what I remember is jumping up on the bed to sort of give my mum a hug and her wincing and... I think it's a real memory. I don't think it's something that I dreamed or that I've imagined imagined afterwards. Mm. Um, that is why, intriguing. Why? I, maybe maybe it was maybe it was seeing my mum that that momentary pain on her face that made it stick in my stick in my head. I don't know. Mm. I've also remember maybe six months later feeding my my brother and sister were twins, and so when my mum was feeding one, I would feed the other, and I've got this very clear memory of feeding my brother when he was a baby as well. Pretty intriguing. Well, can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind, Mark? Yeah, yeah. I love the idea of who you are as even a two-year-old and nine-month child, uh, which speaks to your awareness, um, which speaks to who you are even now as that great listener, as the customer um, service-oriented individual. Because for you to be able to support by being there, in the hospital secondly to be aware to offer that hug but then to be aware of the the pain your mother is in it just for me speaks to the awareness that is necessary to serve the customers you are serving the way you do serve them now which is pretty intriguing to me yeah it's interesting i'd never i'd never thought of it that that way that your maybe your personality starts to form at such an early age it's a fascinating isn't it yeah yeah Hmm. Well, something to, 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 to chew, chew over I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take that away and have a think about it well that's wonderful well Mark if we fast forwarded to when you were 12 years old what was your favorite song well now we're talking about 1986 and I didn't have my musical epiphany till 1990 so this is this is some pop music riding high in the charts I guess and uh, in the UK there was this TV show called Top of the Pops which doesn't exist in the UK anymore but maybe does around the world elsewhere and every every Thursday evening we would watch Top of the Pops. And uh, I researched this. And in March 1986, four weeks after my 12th birthday, Diana Ross was number one in the UK with Chain Reaction, which was written by the Bee Gees. And I've always liked the Bee Gees. I've always liked that song. And, you know, it came on the radio just two or three weeks ago over here. And I still love that song. And I can still <laughs> almost sing along to it. I can't quite get the high note. I can't quite get the high note, but I know the words still. Anyway. That's amazing. Well, I do, uh, I am fascinated by how things can connect. Uh, I mean, definitely what you're doing, what you have done does create a chain reaction, doesn't it? Where you started export and uh, after being uh, made redundant and then here it's the service where you're supporting others and you get the feedback and then there's the chain reaction of the service and what it looks like now. It's a constant chain reaction, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think that's true. And, and also um, doing a, 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 a podcast that, that reaches out to people overseas and hopefully wants to encourage them to come here. It also it also ties in because we've 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 noticed that I I believe one one of the things firing fueling this podcast is my belief that people will come to Finland if they know what goes on here. And we've started to speak to people about tourism development. There's mm. a lot of work that could be done in this region that I live in uh, to develop tourism. And when I tell them that I have this podcast, it brings a lot of barriers down. They can see, okay, you're not just someone who wants work. You're actually doing something, and maybe that makes us makes us want to trust you. And uh, I was given this this award about one and a half years ago for Regional Developer of the Year for 2015, based on the work I was doing with the podcast. Wow. Only a small local thing. I don't I don't make a big deal about it, but it's nice to get 
a little bit of recognition from time to time that you're doing the right things. Definitely. A chain reaction. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, Mark, we've arrived at our destination now, but before we get off of this time machine, there is a small declaration form. So it's yes or no, possibly a bit more. We're going to go okay. pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Mark? Let's go. Mark, sure. have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Not really, but my kids, like many kids, think that YouTuber is a career path. So maybe that's something they want to do. But, <laughs> but podcasts have no pictures, so they're not so interested just yet in what their dad's doing. Well, you said that you have an an ex-wife now so i'm guessing you're not married right not not anymore but i live with my with my girlfriend satu and she has two kids and as i said before i have two kids so that's that's four in my family okay do you believe in god no i don't do you have an inner circle of friends yeah i have a group of british friends living here in sanioki and i think that counts as my as my inner circle they're they're people i've been able to rely on for support in the last few years and there's been some challenges in the last few years so if you're listening to this Sanioki Brits I appreciate you I think you know that anyway there we go but do you watch TV for more than three hours a day no how about three hours a week yeah I think maybe one and a half per day um <laughs> and what about screen time the phone under the computer is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day no that's definitely more that's work vlog podcast social media that's definitely more than eight hours a day Hmm. mark if you had to share with us a statement that represents who you are your own unique real statement what would you say that is well before we'd spoken today uh, maybe i had to change it after our conversation but i think it's give your time help people and it will come back to you it's not mine original to me i read it somewhere or heard it somewhere but i'm working through that that theory that that's what's uh, that's what's going to help me in the in the long run and there we go definitely the equation for the chain reaction well mark this has been a great pleasure before you leave is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience well there's one there's one story about me that that people always makes people stop and think when when we first moved to finland with my with my wife um it was a bit of an experiment she wanted to move back to her her hometown and I was still working in, in and my job was still in London. So for three years, I was commuting between Finland and London pretty much every weekend. Wow. Um, yeah, it, exactly. I don't recommend it. Uh, <laughs> it was a means to an end, but I don't recommend it. So um, I just wasn't brave enough, I guess, to to make the move. I was working for the man and the job was OK. So I, I made my life a bit more difficult than I needed to. Um, so... What would I share? Be brave, people. Love it. Mark will share again. This was a great pleasure. Thank you, my friend, for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thanks, Angel. Nice to speak. Thank you for being on 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Stay tuned for more from our advertisers. Diabetes is a mountain pandemic. It's a disease that's not acute, but chronic. Similar to this rhyming method, I have simplified the definition, the signs and symptoms, and the complications of diabetes for both adults and children in my books, Poems for Patients, A Focus on Diabetes, and The ABCs of Diabetes for Children. These books are available on Amazon.com, and for more information, you can visit my website, poemsbyag.com. That's poemsbyag.com.